Welcome to The Music Reel. I am Nicola Burton and I'm here today with Mark Colvin, Premier DJ yep, right. Queensland, owner of Our House Productions and uh, Musician Program Manager for the Pushworth Group. How are you going, Mark? Very well, thanks, Nick. And yourself? Well, it's, um, I'm pretty good considering it's March 900th. It's the 900th day of March today. <laughs> Indeed, tell me about it. <laughs> we have been, we, it just feels like we're in this twilight zone. We're, we're both still frozen back in March. It's, it's so right. still surreal. Six months, six months on, nothing's changed, and, um, and here we are. <laughs> so, look, we had a community project a few years ago at Pushworth called the, the Sound Garden, where we set up a community garden down um, at the Albert Park Flexi Centre School. And it was really great for our mental health. Now, obviously, that's not working anymore. So what we've noticed is a lot of musicians, including us, have tried to start gardens during, during the lockdowns to try and keep themselves sane. Indeed. So, Mark, I thought I'd sort of have a look at your garden because it's, um, it's amazing. So let's start with yeah. um, when did you start it? When did you start the garden? Okay. So when lockdown hit, uh, probably about... I sort of preempted the lockdown a little bit. I, I had a bit of an inkling that what was going to happen was going to happen. Um, so I sort of took a few steps earlier to sort of go, all right, well, if that's going to be the case and we're going to be locked down for a while, um, A, I'm going to need something for my sanity. Um, and I've always been, I very much like to be a very busy person. Um, so this six months has been very, very interesting to say the least. So for me, the garden was a real chance to have something that I could delve a lot of time into um, and sort of keep the brain not thinking so much about the situation that we're in. Um, and it has helped. It has really, really, really helped a lot. But uh, it was very mm. early, probably very early March. Yeah. Um, I you started. guys, you were right onto it. You cracked right onto it, you know, straight away. Yeah. Look, yeah. Just, just from, you know, all the chat that was flowing around, I was like, well, I think it's. I think this might be real. <laughs> and, well, uh, <laughs> Mark and I had this moment in the Pushworth office. I'm going to tell this story again because, <laughs> like February, we're in. We have in the meeting room. We're talking with the other bookers, and they're like, "No, nope, it's not going to happen. This nah. nothing's going to happen. It's all going to be fine." Right, we looked at fine. each other and went, mm, okay, "I'm not sure oh. about that." <laughs> so yeah, oh, look, I have been inspired by what you've done in your garden, and I've Ooh. got some pots there. But, you know, because I'm in a city, a tiny little cottage, I don't have the space that you have. So can you... Uh, it, size and space doesn't matter. Um, anything yeah. can be a garden. Anywhere can be a garden. You've just got to, you've just got to put your mind to it, really. Yeah. Well, look, I, I want to see your... I want everyone to see your garden today. So let's start with the first big one. If you can turn it around and take us on a tour All of the right. garden and tell us about what you're growing so it's going. this one here is our major, major the, the larger garden anyway. Um, so that's about five and a half by three and a half metres. Wow. Um, it took a little bit of time, a little bit of digging. Obviously, we had to get you know, all the skirting in and had to dig down and all that sort of stuff. So I, I learned a lot about uh, building in the process. Um, also found out that we had plumbing underneath, so sort of had to learn how to do a little bit of on-the-fly plumbing as well. Uh, but these are all the good things about gardens. You learn very, very quickly. But, uh, right, what we have here is we have zucchinis in the corner. We have some cauliflower, broccoli, onions, carrots. Around here, we've got some lemongrass in the corner. We've got some tomatoes growing here uh, with some... Uh, with some basil in the front because they're, they're a pairing plant that sort of help each other together and um, keep each other safe from, from pests and bits and pieces. So heaps of tomatoes and basil. Obviously, we've got flowers and marigolds and bits and pieces all around to uh, attract um, the beneficial bees and, and pollinators. Um, sage, beans, parsley, broccolini, chilli, beetroot, spring onion, garlic, Lettuce, rocket, and baby spinach. <laughs> Mark, so that's, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. That's garden that's, one. That's, so, all right, so you've obviously, you've got um, a covering over it. Do you have problems with possums? Yes. Uh, there's a swath of possums in our area, and um, we sort of figured, well, we could either leave it open or we could just go, let's just cover it up um, and sort of try and keep the pest out, which has done 
really, really well. So we haven't had any dramas whatsoever, which has been great. All right. So I want to talk about, I mean, look, I love, I wish I had your yard. I, I love that garden. I, you know, I'm stuck with these pots, as you know. Mm. What, how has it actually helped you to, to better understand yourself as a musician um, growing the garden? Because, like, I, in the morning I'll get up and I'll, like, do a little bit of weeding and I think to myself, I have to weed the shit out of my mind so that I can Absolutely. stay focused. And, like, and, and it's because you're growing something. And when you're in business, especially the music business, it's all about growth. You're always evolving, always developing. Yeah. So talk yeah. me through how the garden has really helped you with your mindset about this industry. Well, as we know, it's been a pretty tumultuous sort of six months for, for anyone that's in this industry and involved in the industry. Um, you know, it compounded a little harder on my end from the fact that, uh, what, probably in, I think it was about May or early June, I was um, diagnosed with a DVT in my right leg. Um, so I had a, what you'd call gigantic 29 centimetre clot running from my ankle to the back of my right knee. Um, so the garden for me has been, as I said earlier, sort of that, that thing that I can really dedicate some time and effort into. Um, as I said earlier, being someone that likes to be incredibly busy and always doing something, um, I needed I needed something to really, really focus on. And especially with, I found with plants, because whether it be, you know, whether it be vegetables or, or you know, anything else, it's a living thing. So you've really, really got to tend to it, make sure that it's, it's happy and it, that it's, that its feelings are in check, if you know what I mean. So, you know, if you don't water it, you don't fertilise it, you're not going to get the crops, you're not going to get the flowers that you need. Um, so I sort of, there's a lot of similarity, I think, just in between life in general and, and growing things, um, a bit of that connection. Um, so for me, it's been a real, I don't know, a bit of a lifesaver, to tell you the truth. Um, I think so. Oh, 100%. It's, um, um, I mean, no one else could rock that hat, that hat and glasses right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got to represent the Bundaberg. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that, you know, I mean, you've had that health challenge as well as not being able to gig, not being able to work. And as a DJ, it's really hard for you to sort of go back now because we can't dance, obviously, in Queensland. So it's started uh, really hard to sort of Unbelievable. Be, oh, it's <laughs> we thought we'd be saying, well, in 2020, no one's allowed to dance. And if you do, there's a $6,000 fine. So, no, nah, um, you can't even dance in your chair either. You know, like that's, uh, that's when you I start know. to know it's getting interesting. But, so, um, take us to, you know, your little spot around under the shed where you ha start your seedlings. I want, it, want everyone yeah, to see yeah. that because this is such an important part of the process about planning ahead. So Mark's understanding about planning ahead, starting with the seedlings and then before it takes them out into the garden. And as people in the music business, well, really any business, but in our industry, to be able to plan ahead, I think is so critical. So show us what you're doing there, Mark. All right. So this little area here is, well, we do have a greenhouse, but we're not using that at the moment because the temperatures picked up a lot and we found that um, it was getting really, really hot in there and a lot of things were sort of starting to char. So... What I do have at the moment, though, is a little nursery down here of stuff that's growing, and it's a little bit more comfy, um, not being in so much of a, a humid box at the moment. But at the moment, we've got, we've got some bits and pieces here for our friends. We've had a couple of friends that have moved into new houses and obviously want some herbs and bits and pieces, so we've got some bits and pieces happening there, but obviously some, um, some other stuff to go into the garden patch um, yeah. when the other stuff comes out. Um, and sort of do the crop rotation thing so that you've always got, you know, you always got something going of what you need. Um, but there's always, I mean, we've got some flowers and bits and pieces around here at the moment. We're just sort of learning with, um, on all bases really, trying to you know, see what works, what doesn't, where it works. Because, I mean, not everything you have, uh, not everything that you want to plant, may work in position yeah. where you want to have it. Um, so for, for myself and, and Danielle, it's been a real a real learning process too. Um, obviously, as we said, things want to grow, but if you, you've you really got to pay attention to, I mean, we, we've had a real good look, delve into, um, you know, just the basics of, of horticulture and bits and pieces like that. So, you know, if you're planting things out of season, 
don't expect that they're going to work. Um, that was a lesson that we learned very quickly. Obviously, with the whole lockdown thing, we we tried to um, we tried to do the right thing and sort of plan out the garden and go, right, we're going to put this here and that there and that there. Um, and eventually we got to a point where it was like, bugger it, we're just going to plan it and see what happens. Um, and I think that's probably the best thing you can do with gardens is just just check it and see. Um, honestly, you'll, you'll never have a 100% success rate. Things will die. Um, but... I'm the queen of that. I kill everything. <laughs> I, I, tr- I love the idea of a garden, but I don't know. It's really hard to keep it alive in a pot. I mean, I, do you have worms? I, I know that's not a polite question to ask. But do you have worms? Personally, no. Uh, in the yard, no. But uh, it, is, <laughs> it is something that we're looking at um, over the next yeah. little bit. Because I've got what my little do, worms What we do have is compost. So um, that's been one of the big things that I've, I've really loved doing over the last little bit is learning not to throw out um, good fresh produce or, you know, clippings of herbs and bits and pieces and vegetables, all that stuff now goes in the compost. Yeah. Um, and, and wow. you know, you're reusing, not just that, your, your garbage footprint goes down by a massive amount because yeah. uh, your compost obviously needs uh, nitrogen and oxygen. So things like, um, you know, your paper rolls, your old toilet rolls, old papers, newspapers, twigs, everything goes in there and it just gets broken down and you end up wow. with a a beautiful base that pretty much anything's going to grow out of. And it kind of helps you to really think about the food that you're buying and cooking. Time. It affects yep. everything. And it's almost like this great analogy for life and for business because you, you're really thinking about how everything feeds into everything else. Exactly right. And, you know, that's we learned, you know, very quickly that, okay, it's great, just to, it's great to want to grow things and have vegetables, but at the same time, there's a lot of other things going on in the background. If you don't have the pollinators and the bees in your yard, nothing's going to work. So we also had to sort of put in this little strip down here, which is pretty much uh, what they just call a good bug mix. So everything in there is designed to uh, draw the beneficial bugs uh, back into the yard. So your bees, your hoverflies, that sort of stuff. Um, to get rid of the nasties like your aphids and all that sort of stuff that generally eat all your produce. Um, so, yet again, like there's just, uh, over a six-month period, there's been uh, a lot of information to take in, but um, it's been really beneficial, I think, to tell you the truth. I think it's really given you a purpose. It's kept you busy. It's kept that super creative and organisational mind of yours. Um, you're, you're continuing to create... Focused on I think it's brilliant. And there's so many of our guys that we work with in the music industry that are doing the same thing. But I haven't seen a garden like yours. So well done, Mark. Mark's oh, it's going to be good, running man. programs later on in the year teaching us how to garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. It's, uh, it's never a perfect thing, though. I can tell you that. It's, um, yeah, it's like life. You go. Like life. Life's not perfect either. And you learn God, from... Man. You know, every time I kill a plant, I think, okay, what is it trying to tell me? <laughs> That's it. That, and they are trying to tell you something, whether it be, you know, like we've got another little section out the back here that we use, obviously, for the half-shaded sort of plants. Um, and we well, we had to learn that particular plants just can't cop full sun and won't accept full sun. Um, so, yet again, you know, it's just about putting the right plant in the right place or in a business sense, the right person in the right job, the right person in the right, you know, the right gig. Um, so there's there's so many similarities <laughs> between, you know, what goes on in the garden and what goes on, I suppose, business. I think this is a new thing for you, Mark. I can see gardening's going to be, it's when everything returns, I think this will still be important to you. Uh, not going anywhere because it's um it's a, it's a really nice reset um you know normally this time in the morning i'm out here giving everything a bit of a water and it's just a nice little, you know 20 minute half hour break of not having to think about anything else but just worrying about the state of the yard and you know what needs what and yeah what you need to do out here I love it. Well, this is my office for the day. So I, it's sort of much nicer being outside, even though I don't have a lot of plants, at least I'm starting it. And well, um, Even just being around plants in general, I think has a really, really beneficial, you know, it is massively beneficial for everyone. So, yeah. Look, anyone who's watching this, if you want to know more about gardening, contact Mark. I'll put his contact details in because he seriously has changed not just his life, but our lives just by watching what he's been doing. And through this whole pandemic and lockdown and change to our industry, 
it has been a massive boost for both of us with our mental health. And I think, you know, across the board, gardening is something we need to do more of anyway. Mark Colvin from Our House Productions, thank you so much for talking to me. And good luck with the rest of the gardening. Thank you very much. I'll need it.